We are ready to take off. Here on Ultimate Sports is going to be informative, educative, talent development, of course, interviewing of the various sporting personalities here in Ghana and beyond. Then there is bragging rights where we'll be touching base with the teaming fans in the various sports bar before, after the various matches. So as now not make me down. They are going to win today's game. Two goals to nil. That's the position of Dano. Second one or Oko Dano. And yes, by chance. Or sir, to us. Remember, we bring you nothing but the very best in the world of sports, ranging from boxing, basketball, badminton, and what have you. We bring you more talent hunting episodes, of course, on this very network. My name is Sami Ofosuyene. With me, Dennis Pekumo. Together, we bring you Ultimate Sports right here on HS yes, Television. So, uh, thanks for coming back again here on the show. You are still watching the Ultimate Sports right here uh, with me, Dennis Moore. And uh, right about now, we are going over to our first segment, Documentary Lifestyle. And this time around, we had a chance of uh, getting in touch with Ali Jara. Let's go uh, for the footages. <laughs> Mental, and he's coming to tell us how he works hand to hand with Ali Jara. So, Daniel, how do you work hand to hand with uh, Ali Jara? Okay, I would like to touch on the aspect of how I even met Ali Jara in the first place. Um, when I, I entered into the disability fraternity, is uh, one of the key people who also approached me uh, to welcome me <laughs> in, to join their fraternity. <laughs> and he shared his experience with me as well. Um, since he's also having much experience in the coaching industry, I also have a second division football club and uh, he came on board to see how best they can develop with his children. Uh, you see, when, from the area where I'm coming from, an angle where I, I look to the individual, where I wanted to develop them, bring them from the, uh, the street and uh, give them livelihood, uh, I decided also to do football, but uh, this time I was to give talented people who really need uh, help. So we collaborated and uh, we got Ali Jara on board. So he's among the technical uh, team that are training these boys uh, very well in the club. Um, former uh, Kuchini, uh, late Kuchini, also working hand with Ali Jara with me in the club to see how best they can really develop the talent these young guys are having. So how is it working with him? It's great, it's great. Uh, he has the passion to support persons who are really in need and since I have the same dream, uh, it's like uh, working together. Passionately, we, we know what we're doing and uh, we love doing it and uh, it's really cool working with Alicia. That's great, thank you very much, Ni. I am here with Emmanuel Ofosu Yeboa and I'm coming to ask him how he met Ali Jara. So Emmanuel, how did you meet Ali Jara? I met him in Mexico in 2014. That time I was playing for US national team and he too came with the Ghana team in Mexico. That's how that the first time I met him. But um, previous, I know that uh, he was coaching the Ghana team, but that time I left to US. So we never met until we met in Mexico. How do you see working with him? How is it like? Um, you know, he was not a um, physically challenged person before he got his injury to be part of the amputee team. And um, the passion he brought to the amputee team, you know, is make the guys happy to work with him. Um, he never trained me before until the time we met in Mexico, like how I said. But um, his um, passion and everything, the guys like him. Okay. Yeah. So tell me, um, how do you see the future in football? It's very bright. It's very bright. Now I came to support my fellow amputees to organize league here in Ghana to make um, 
Ghana soccer perfect than the Ebus one. So, for instance, I'm involved and culturally involved. I think everything's going to be perfect. It's going to be very bright in the near future. Yes. Thank you very much. We just spoke to Emmanuel Ofusu Yeboa. Yeah, of course, everybody knows when we talk about Alija, right? And I think he's one of Ghana's most um, outrageous and then most famous goalkeeping. We are very privileged to have him amongst this team, Dan Devan. And then he's serving very good. The relations be very cordial. I think it's very good. He can work anywhere around the world. I think so. He's very great. Of course, you know. He's been in the game. He's passed through the drills. He knows what we talk about football. He's been with the team. And then I think he's helping the coaching department as well in the um, goalkeeping department. It's very good keeping having him. The impact is when everybody would like to have Ali Jara in his team. So when you are privileged like this, whenever he steps on the foot, you could see what will happen. The boys, everybody listens to him and then things go on smoothly for us. I think if not, I think if not for his sickness, you should know. Even at his, this stage, look at the way he's working. So I don't know what to say about him, but hey, it's very good for us. For him again. My final words is, I think I'm very lucky to have him as the technical head of this team. So we share ideas together, we do everything together and it's working for the team. And the development as well is going on well. And we think these guys are the future leaders in Ghana football. Uh, I think Ali Jara, is how he has a very good impact on Dan Devan Soccer Academy. Because his coaching system, how he coaches, how he's so familiar with us and his tactics that he uses on a pitch of play, I think is very good and we are very familiar to him. We, are, we, are, we, are, we want to adopt his style of play since he was in the national teams and everything. To me, uh, when I came to Dan Devan Soccer Academy, I was having problems with my crossing, uh, my crossing ability. But through Ali Jara, I think I'm a little bit perfect now. That I can say that I can boost off him being a great impact. On My name is Ali Jara, former Ghanaian international. I was born and bred in Mamblobi. I have, we have seven siblings. My mother's name is Aishetu Jara. My father is Abu Bakari Jara. Seven in number, six boys, one girl. I started from confidence institutions, after confidence, I, I went to ATTC, Accra Technical Training Center, which I studied refrigeration. Due to uh, football, I have to break on the way to start pursuing my career with football, which I was picked to play a coast team, Fatah Babies, at Mamplobi in Dafa Park. That's where I started from. In 89, it was a coast festival which I was called upon to start playing for Ghana National uh, 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 Under 17, which was the Starless. I was called after the Starless, which I was picked to play across. So that's how my life started. And from 91, which Ghana won the first Under 17 World Cup in Japan, in Italy 91, which we beat Spain. 2-1 in the final. In 92, Ghana won the African first African Cup of Nation, which was held in Mauritius, which Ghana won, which I was part of the squad. In 93, Australia 93, which Ghana under 20, we were beaten by Brazil in the final to one bronze, a, a, a silver. And the same 93, we were fortunately, we were fortunate in uh, uh, our time to play twice in the under 17. So in 93, the same 93 which I was in, inclusive to play, which we were beaten in uh, Japan by Nigeria 2-1. I came back to Ghana, which I can say domestically, I was the only person who have won the best player football, most exciting player football prospect with a class of hope. That was in 92, 93 season. After the 
uh, under 17 World Cup. I came to Ghana and I got paralyzed. I was there for one, one year, one year, two months. In the hospital? Yes. But I, nobody knew what happened to me. Up to date, I don't think they, they told me it was a sort of. They were affiliating it. It was a sort of Guillain Barry syndrome, but they don't know the actual, the actual because course. I went there. I know I met one of the best doctors. I went to Stockman Devil. It's one of the best uh, hospitals in the UK based on uh, that sickness. Currently, I am a coach, which I was. I am with the national amputees, which have taken them to three World Cups, played two African Cup of Nations which Ghana has been the only country who has been into the quarterfinal in the world level two times. Which, the first time I took them to Africa, we were second, we were beaten by Liberia. Ghana won the and second edition, uh, the second and the first, and they beat Nigeria, I took them in, the into the same African Cup in uh, Kenya, which we were beaten by uh, Angola in the third place. So Ghana was two amputee, which I started coaching. Uh, we were second and third in African Cup of Nations. I own a goalkeeper's academy, which I have 360 goalkeepers, which I train for free, which we can boost of Fata Odawada, Philemon mm -hmm. Makati, Kute Blansin, uh, etc., etc., which uh, we own a second division club, which I train as well, as Dan Divine Football Club, which uh, we were in Division 2. I was with Pure Joy Football Club, which I trained the goalkeepers as well. So that's what I do for now. I played alongside Odate Lante, Sami Osei Kufo, Sebastian Banz, Mohamed Gago, Shamokwe, in the domestic league, Shamokwe, Abladekuma, Ama Senegal, Sam Johnson, uh, Sam Yebua, Nane Shen, and others. Khalil Dramani, those are my colleagues I play with. I think it's been 25 years since I got paralyzed. Uh, everybody has a role to play in his life. Uh, things have passed which we think into future, that's where I focus on. I, I've, I've lived whatever comes has behind me, which I just wanted to move forward. That's what I does now. I don't think about who or whoever, but I, I, I'm grateful to be a soccer player. I, I have said, uh, now I am into coaching. I focus more on my coaching career, my family, and do whatever I do best. That's what I'm doing. Yes and no, because in Ghana, when you are playing, everybody heals you. But something happens to you, nobody cares. That's my worry. But the yes aspect, yes. In football, if not soccer, I will not be uh, interviewed. So that alone, it's a bigger uh, uh, platform for me. Street has been named to me Ali Jarrah Street. It's a, it's, it's a big honor to me in my area, Gege, which street has been named as Ali Jarrah Street. So it's, that alone is a great honor to me. Yes, I, I am grateful to Daniels because I can't call all names. I'm most, most grateful to Ghanaians who knew exactly what I've done for the nation, who understands what I'm doing, which I'm grateful to each and everybody. I think each and every Ghanaian is a soccer player who takes up, gets up in the morning, picks a sponge, start playing, that is, is a soccer player. But I was picked upon in the to join the coast team whilst we were playing. As, at, time I, I, at first, I was a soccer player, which we were playing. I was picked to join a coast team. And joining the coast team was a great honor, which I thought I can be a best goalkeeper. 
because when I go there, I see the goalkeepers in pools, they play the shots, we run and pick the ball and give them back to them. So we started gradually, I was in pools and I start doing what I know best and I become a goalkeeper. I wasn't looking at anybody. I grew up at an area where it's only stars, soccer stars who lives in that area. And I think I would say I stepped into the shoes of Salif Ansan because he taught me what to do and what to do best. So I don't grow up to say I wanted to be like someone, but I saw someone who is one of the best, which I followed. And I'm grateful to Salif Ansan to whatever he has, late Salif Ansan to whatever he has done. So because he gave me the chance, he taught me how to keep. He showed me the way to the top. I think my mother don't allow me to play soccer because he said there is medicine in football, or she doesn't allow it. But my father is more of a sports man, but not in terms of soccer, but in terms of horse racing. He's a trainer based on horse racing. So my dad supported me, showed me what to do. If I want to do, I should do its best. And I think it yields by taking whatever channel I took, I think was the best for me. Whatever has have name exists, but I don't believe in medicine in football. Football is based on purely uh, mental toughness, toughness and skill. Medicine doesn't occur in a uh, matter in football because we go to play in a uh, hole whereby every uh, voodoo person comes out from out to support Vora but at the end of the day has a football win. So medicine alone, they, I don't think medicine exists in football. I think in my time, it wasn't like this rain whereby every junction you see, you will see people praying or churches around, no. People believe in spiritual ways at the time we were playing, but uh, a player calls from, uh, we've we'll, we'll been called from RTU, which he comes to the national team one, one week, he goes back home. Shows there's nothing sh calls medicine in football. But you could see the reason why 91 Ghana won the under 17 World Cup in Italy. Because we were united, we know how to play, and we are prayerful. So we were more united. That's why we were able to win the 91 World Cup. It wasn't any medicine or who, whatever, no. Every belie everybody has his own way to believe whatever he believes in. People thought any other ways, but I don't think so. I take it in the good way. Life is a challenge. It comes my way to know that there is somebody called God. That's Ali. That's my belief. People related it into I followed people's wife, my malam, whatever happens, but I didn't believe so. Because out of this sickness, if you go to, into the medical way, out of 100%, you will not get even 1% to survive. But I am part of the uh, luckiest people to be able to walk the way I am, having my 80% fit. So I'm most grateful to the Almighty. I don't relate my situation to anybody, though. Uh, it's vice versa. My father won by Ali Jara making the name. My mother won by telling me not to play football because there's medicine in football. So it's vice versa. For the past two seasons, from the first to eight and the last to 16, it's a bit challenging. So we can say Ghana football is climbing up and we pray that it climbs up. Whilst we've been giving birth each and every day and giving meal children birth, shows we have the bright future of Ghana football. But it's up to us to put up a good structures so that everybody can climb to the top. I think football is a seasonal job. This young up and coming players should be closer to the former generation players. The mistakes they've done in the future, they, they will advise them not to do the same mistakes. Because 
football is a seasonal job. I played mine for only two and a half years. Maybe you will not progress to 10 years, 15 years, so that you'll be able to take good care of whatever the Almighty God will give you, so that in the near future, you will not go uh, house to house begging. This year will be 25th year since I got paralyzed. 25 years, and I'm most grateful to each and every Ghanaian for their, their prayers and their support. I'm most grateful to each and every